Welcome back to the second part of this Bits of Q tutorial on type deduction. In the first part we established that with modern C++, type deduction can be found all over the place, from template type deduction to generic lambdas. In that video we talked about the two big ones, template and other type deduction. And in doing so, we also discussed the rules of forwarding references. We created this table, which shows what your T, your parameter type, or your other variable is deduced to with different types of input expressions. These input expressions are shown on the left, and the different ways of accepting your parameter are shown at the top. If you haven't seen part one, please watch it first, as we will be referring back to the things discussed there. You can find the link in the description. In the second part, we will be talking about all the other forms of type deduction. In particular, the rules involving the various kinds of type deduction when dealing with lambdas, function return types, and tackle type expressions. My name is Quirijn, and this is a Bits of Q Advanced C++ tutorial. Let's get started. Lambdas. They are introduced in C++11 and extended in C++14. They give us a way to quickly define an anonymous function and are ideal for customizing behavior of standard library algorithms or for making our own algorithms more flexible. Here I have defined a one-line lambda representing some linear formula of the form a times x plus a constant ca. In this simple lambda, we see several kinds of type deduction happening. First, we have other type deduction, which, as explained before, follows the template type deduction rules, assuming we don't have any braced initializers to deal with. Next, we have lambda capture deduction, as well as lambda init capture deduction, which we haven't discussed before. Finally, there's return type deduction to determine the return type of your lambda. Let's start with lambda capture deduction. Here we distinguish two cases, capturing by reference and capturing by value. If you're capturing by reference, the rules for type deduction are the same as those for template type deduction for reference parameters, which as you might remember from the previous episode, were very simple. First, if your incoming expression is a reference, we ignore that. So in this case, our incoming expression is an R value reference to int. We simply strip off that R value reference. Then, we do some pattern matching to figure out what our T is. In this case, an integer. In the case of lambda captures, there's not much pattern matching to do making the deduction even more straightforward. You simply strip off the reference and then stick on an L value reference. In this case, the deduced type would be const int, making the parameter type, which is the type of our local CA, a reference to const int. When capturing by value, we also use template deduction rules. But here there's a twist. Where the deduction rules for value template deduction state to ignore const and volatile qualifiers, here they are maintained meaning that in this case, both our expression and our deduce type for CA are const int. This is the only place in C++ where, when creating a copy, a completely new instance of an object, you still retain your const and volatile qualifiers. This is something that becomes relevant when you are dealing with mutable lambdas. Here I have a simple mutable lambda that returns a new incremented value every time you call it. When the compiler comes across this lambda, it will generate a class like this one with a private member called pref. For the type of pref, it will use the deduce type int. If, however, we would have made our input pref a const int, like this, then, since const and volatile are retained when doing lambda capture deduction, the private member pref will also be of type const int, meaning that we get a compilation error when trying to increment our pref. So, to summarize, lambda capture deduction follows template deduction rules, but, with the exception that when capturing by value, the const and volatile qualifiers are retained. Next, we have lambda init capture. Init capture rules are the same as those for other type deduction, which includes the rules for braced initializer lists. This means that the following is perfectly legal. In this case, the class that the compiler generates for this lambda will contain an A member that is initialized with a braced initializer list, and according to the rules, of auto type deduction, this gives us an std initializer list as the deduce type for A. I want to emphasize the difference between the value lambda capture and the value lambda init capture. 
This is the same get next lambda we saw before. We are using by value lambda capture, which follows template type deduction rules, but retains const and volatileness. As a result, pref is deduced to be a const int, resulting in an error when trying to increment. Now, if we create an exact copy of this lambda, but use lambda init capture instead of the normal by value capture, I'm using the auto type deduction rules to determine the type of the local pref member. As a result, my local pref member is deduced as an integer, not as a const integer, making this lambda behave as expected. So, back to our initial lambda. We have now discussed the first three forms of type deduction needed to parse this lambda. Next, we have return type deduction. In a lambda like this, where we haven't done anything special to explicitly specify the return type, other return type deduction rules are used. That means that the return type of this function and the lambda follow the same rules. Strangely enough, these rules are the rules for template type deduction. In particular, this means that a braced initialization list will not be deduced as an initializer list. Instead, you'll get a compilation error. Another form of return type deduction is decal type auto return type deduction. As the name suggests, the decal type rules are used for deducing the decal type auto return type. Since we haven't discussed decal type deduction yet, let's do that now. In the case of decal type deduction, we distinguish two cases. Either you are requesting the decal type of a name, or you are requesting the decal type of an expression. In case you pass a name to decal type, it will resolve to the declared type of that name. In particular, this means that it never strips const, volatile, or references. This is different from other type deduction. It's just like template type deduction does strip these things when accepting by value. In case we use decal type with an expression, there's obviously no declared type that can be used. So here the deduced type depends on the type of expression. When given an L value expression of type T, the decal type of that expression is an L value reference to T. Often L value expressions are already reference types, such as the return type of the subscript operator. In case where they are not, such as when dealing with built-in arrays, they already act like a reference type. As such, you could say that decal type tends to act just as expected when dealing with L value expressions. Of course, strictly speaking, a name is also an L value expression. That's why the name rule gets priority in the case where your L value expression is only a name. Even though A is an L value expression, it is also a name, and hence it deduces to the declared type int, not a reference to int. When dealing with R value expressions, things get a bit more complicated as here the decal type deduction rules make a distinction between PR values and X values. When dealing with a PR value expression of type T, the deduced type will be T. When dealing with an X value expression of type T, the deduced type will be an R value reference to T. If you're not familiar with the rules for breaking down your R values into PR values and X values, it roughly boils down to the following. An R value is always either a PR value or an X value. PR stands for pure R value, X value stands for expiring value. If you're dealing with an X value, if you're dealing with the result of a static cost to an R value reference or a function returning an R value reference. Or secondly, if you already have an X value and you access a member of that X value, that member is also an X value. If you're not in one of these two cases, you're dealing with a pure R value. So now that we know the rules for decal type deduction, let's go back to return type deduction and see what the implications of these rules are. Here we have a simple function, get four, which returns the number four. We have one variant that uses auto return type deduction and another one that uses decal type auto. Since A is a name, the deduction rules for names apply and hence the return type for decal type auto is an integer, just like in the other version of the function. However, if we were to slightly modify our function by adding some parentheses around the return, thereby turning it into an L value expression, now suddenly a different rule applies for the decal type deduction, and we are returning a reference to a local variable, which could lead to all kinds of undefined behavior. As such, when deciding whether to use auto or decal type auto for your return type, I like to stick to a simple rule of thumb. 
use auto when a reference type should never be returned, as auto will never deduce to a reference type. Use decal type auto when a reference type could be a valid return type. In this case, clearly auto is the safer option. A good use case for using decal type auto is when writing accessors. This access first function, for example, which can be used to access the first element of a vector. It works correctly when used with a vector of int, as the subscript operator of vector of int returns a reference to int. This is an L value expression, and hence the deduce return type for our access first is also a reference to int. When using the same access first function with a vector of booleans, we see that the PR value expression rules get triggered. This is because the subscript operator of a vector of bool returns an instance of a proxy object, namely the standard bit reference. This is a PR value. Hence, the deduce return type for access first is also a standard bit reference. Decal type auto only deduced to a reference type when the return type was a reference type, exactly as intended. At this point, we have already discussed seven situations in which type deduction occurs. We talked about decal type deduction, we talked about auto deduction, lambda capture and lambda init capture deduction, two forms of return type deduction, and of course, template type deduction. Even though there is some overlap between these different rules, it is quite easy to lose track and wonder what type is deduced for a certain parameter when writing a highly generic library. So if you want to make sure you didn't make any mistakes in applying these rules, and just want to output the deduce type to verify this, how can you do this? A crude yet effective option is to simply trigger a compiler error which contains the type you are interested in. You can simply do this by declaring a template, but not defining it. If I now try to create an instance of output type with t as a template parameter, the compiler will give an error that looks something like this. Error. Output type, and then the type that was deduced for the template parameter, has incomplete type. So with an error like this, you know that t was deduced to be an L value reference to int. A simple and effective method to quickly find out what the deduce type is. But sometimes you need something extra. Maybe this function is called with different types and you want to see all the types that were deduced. In that case, triggering a compilation error on the first instantiation doesn't really help you. A good solution is to use boost's type index header to output the types at runtime. The type index header offers a type ID with CVR template which, unlike the built-in type ID, retains const volatile and references, and as such accurately represents the type passed to it, regardless of its qualifiers. We can now simply call type ID with CVR with our template parameter and request a pretty name to output the deduced type. By using decal type, we can even output the deduced parameter type next to the deduced type for T. And with this, we conclude our tutorial on type deduction in C++. I thought it would be nice to leave you with this overview slide showing all the different forms of type deduction that we discussed, as well as the overlap between the different rule sets. I hope you enjoyed this mini-series and learned something new. If you did, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions or feedback, just leave a comment down below. See you next time.